Um, I think he's great. I mean, he's trying to unlock all the potential, you know, that people have, and I think that's even more important in today's world. Uh, wow, well, I'm glad. I'm glad I stumbled upon it. Yeah, because really, I've been working to build a ray for four years now, and I have a feeling I'm going to learn how to use it now. Thank you all so much for coming to my book launch. I'm so excited. The book actually came out last week, and I'm so thrilled um, to be here at South by Southwest. I'd like to ask some questions to start off, if that's okay. In the last one to two months, privately or professionally, in order to research a product or service you might want to buy, have you gone to Google or another search engine? Look at that, 100% of this room. Have you tapped your peer-to-peer -peer network? That means Facebook, Skype, LinkedIn, Twitter, something like that. The answer that came back from your network was a URL that you then visited. How many people can say yes to this one? Uh, look at this crowd. Okay, that's got to be 98%. And guess what? That is pretty much the same ratio that I get all over the world. What's amazing to me is how consistent it is, the way that people are solving their problems, and how consistently stupid it is the way that companies are marketing. Because it doesn't matter the group, it doesn't matter the audience, it doesn't matter who I ask those questions to, everyone's online, yet companies are spending so much money on things that don't work. So I'd like to tell a story about Cindy Gordon. And Cindy Gordon is the Vice President of Marketing at Universal Orlando Resorts in Florida. And Cindy Gordon was charged with launching a new theme park at Universal Orlando Resorts. And she was given essentially an unlimited budget. I mean, for those people in the room who have small budgets, she was giving, given a gargantuan budget. She could have spent tens of thousands of dollars on, on whatever she wanted to. She could have spent millions of dollars on the best agency. She could have hired blimps. She could have done Super Bowl ads. She could have sent out millions of direct mails. But she didn't do any of those things. Instead, to launch the Wizarding World of Harry Potter theme park, Cindy Gordon told just seven people. She told just seven people. Well, who the hell did you tell, David? She told the seven most popular bloggers about Harry Potter. She told bloggers like MuggleNet. And she told them on a secret midnight webcast that she invited people to. They had a special code, and when they got into the webcast, there was Stuart Craig, the Academy Award-winning set designer for the Harry Potter films. And he said, hey, we're doing a new theme park. I'm going to be working on the design of this. And um, isn't this really cool? And of course, you all know exactly what happened next, don't you? You can guess. Those, those seven bloggers told tens of thousands of people through their blogs. Those tens of thousands of people told hundreds of thousands of people. People emailed it to their friends and colleagues. Mainstream media who was monitoring those blogs, they started to hear about it. And Cindy Gordon told me that within 24 hours of telling just seven people that 350 million people had heard of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, from seven to 350 million people. Isn't that amazing? What we're really all after, isn't it, is attention. We want attention. And for decades, the way to generate attention was to buy it. We bought advertising, we got, bought billboards, magazines, television, radio, direct mail, whatever. We had to buy attention. That's what we do. That's what so many companies do, this sort of generic, non-targeted advertising because somebody might see the billboard on the side of the road. Sometimes when I talk about Cindy Gordon, people say to me, well, well David, okay, that's a big company and you know, they had Harry Potter. I don't know, does anyone else have Harry Potter on your team? I know I don't have Harry Potter on my team. Um, so, I like to tell the story of Dr. Helene Smith as a counterpoint to the big company. Dr. Smith is a dentist in Boston. And for years, she had been doing what all dentists do, buying yellow page ads. And she was spending $2,000 per month on yellow page advertising. And, and she was getting a little bit of business. You know, it was kind of happening for her. She was doing okay. It was a huge 
you know, competition with everyone else who was in the Yellow Pages for Boston for dentists. And then she decided to, to, that she just had to do something different. So she created a worldwide rave. What did she do? She started a blog. And then she created an ebook, just a simple PDF document that was totally free, called Healthy Mouth, Healthy Sex. And Healthy Mouth, Healthy Sex describes the relationship between your oral health and your sex life. And people wrote about it. Bloggers blogged about it. And the American Dental Association freaked out about it. And she created a worldwide rave to the point now where she, this is only 18 months later, she gets between ten dollars and $15,000 in new business every single month through her web initiatives. She stopped doing yellow page advertising. Um, and her business is booming. She's had to hire a whole bunch of other people to help her. It's just incredible what we can do. One of the most important aspects of a worldwide rave, and it, and it goes counterintuitive to what we've all been taught and what all companies do, is that you have to lose control of your marketing. You have to lose control of your messages. You ha if, if you want people to share, you have to let them tell your story in their way so that they'll share. Besides me, any Grateful Dead fans in the room? Oh my gosh, okay, we got a good crowd here. Okay, so the Grateful Dead lost control of their music. What did they do? They allowed the fans to record their concerts. Oh my God, how cool is that? Everybody else, all the other bands said, no, this is silly, why should you do this? And they gave them the best seats in the house. And they said, go ahead, record the music, and then go ahead and share it with your friends. Make copies, give it to your friends, give it to your family members. And people heard this music coming out of the dorm rooms. They heard the music coming out of car stereos. They heard the music coming out of apartment buildings. And they said, wow, this is pretty cool music. What's this? Oh, it's the Grateful Dead. And this caused them to be the number one touring band in history. They sold millions and millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars in concert tickets because they lost control of their music. How cool is that? But we're so afraid of losing control. Fortunately, my publisher, John Wiley and Sons, decided that we wanted to lose control of Worldwide Rave. What we did was we made Worldwide Rave free on Kindle for a week and free on the iPhone Kindle app for a week. And as a result of that, for the last um, 36 hours or so, at least the last time I checked, Worldwide Rave is the number one book on Kindle. Now that is really interesting and it's really cool and it's idea of people spreading the concepts of this book from one to another to another. But this is scary for people. The idea that you're giving something away, that you're letting people tell your story for you. But imagine how interesting it is as an author to have a number one book. Imagine how interesting it is for a band for people to want to go to the shows. You and I are so incredibly lucky. We're so lucky that we can do this. We're so lucky that we can create a worldwide rave, that we can make something online that will drive people to our stuff. We are liberated from the tyranny of having to buy advertising, yet so many people aren't doing this kind of thing. So my question to you is, how will you create a worldwide rave? Thank you very, very much for your attention. I had never seen David speak before, but I thought that he was extremely dynamic. I thought it was great. I thought it was um, exactly what I needed to hear. My thoughts are that in a short presentation, it was very effective. Um, I've started to study PR methods of a few other people, and uh, this seems to be quite effective right off the bat. David rocks. <laughs>